sorry, sorry. Um, first things first, I apologize potentially about the sound because I'm just using my laptop. Uh, this is a last minute addition to the intro of the podcast. Um, so sorry for interrupting the intro. I know everyone enjoys the ba ba da ba da ba. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna torment you to my singing. Uh, So the reason for me interrupting is to say there's going to be a lot of references to part two of this episode in terms of it being a two-parter. Last week I said it was a two. We both said it was a two-parter. It's quite long, so we decided to cut this into two parts. I've got no idea where it's going to stop, and it's just going to stop suddenly. And then next week you're going to get some more. just because when after we finished recording, we realised it was over 50 minutes long, and our normal average episode is about 30 minutes. So we figured, you know what, let's just stick a little bit on there. Um, give us a, an extra week as well before we can get more content to you, because we know how useless we are. Um, so yeah, so enjoy this part two. We'll get through all the TVs and probably start a bit of the movies, and then you can see where our movies continue next week. Right, on with the jingle. Hello and welcome to the No Format Required Podcast, the only podcast where our discussions are as bad as getting a secret Santa from someone you don't know. <laughs> I'm Mike and with me as always is Charlie. Hello. And we are back for part two of our top five Christmas related shiz. Um, That's a word I've not heard for in a while. Shiz. shiz. I say it all the time shiz. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. There you go. You learned something new about me today, Charlie. That is true. I say cheers. 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 Cheers, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Shiz. Shiz. So yes, so um, on the last episode we discussed our top five Christmas songs. Mm -hmm. Uh, This episode we are going to be continuing our Christmas specials, which we also discussed last episode, which I ran completely forgot to mention. Um, (laughs) And our top five Christmas movies. Um, So we finished on our top three. Um, You already know my number two, which was the Royal Family Queen of Sheba. Yeah. Um, But Charlie, what was your number two? Um, So my number two is... I don't know if you will have heard of it, but it's a TV series called The Bear. Oh, yeah. On Disney Disney Plus. Um, So it's the second series. I actually only recently watched it the other day. And, yeah, so I'd kind of added it because I... Well, I swapped it out for another one. But, um, yeah, it's called Fishers. Um, So... Do you know? Do you know anything about The Bear? All I know is it's very similar to... um, Boiling Boiling Point. Boiling Point on BBC. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very similar. So basically, the, the premise is... Um, this guy is like a top chef in like some of the best restaurants in the world, like Michelin star restaurants. Um, his brother lives in Chicago and kills himself, so he goes back to run his his. Well, I say a restaurant; it's like effectively a kind of a kebab house, really. Um, yeah, and it's just dead stressful, like really. Str- and he's basically trying to re. He's, he's hiring new staff. He's trying to change things around. Like he wants it more modern and professional and things, but. There's some of the old stuff there who don't like the the changes and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but the um, so yeah, the the, it's the second series. Um, it's about a. Okay, so it's about. So I think the episode's about half an hour long. This one's about forty five minutes long. But it's a basically a flashback to Christmas. So it's got as his um, brother. Oh, what's his name? The guy from Punisher. John Beth Bethel. Yeah, Bethel. So he plays his brother, so he's in it. Um, there's Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays his mum. Okay. Sarah Paulson, she's oh, in yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Bob o- o- oh, what's his name? Better Call Saul, Bob Odenkirk. So let's say that again. The one from Better Call Saul. Oh, Bob Odenkirk. I can't say his surname, yeah. So I was actually quite surprised, because none of these appear in the series at all, but yet they've all come for this Christmas special. But basically it's one of their traditions that they serve, is it Seven Fishers? Um on Christmas Day, but they all like are just arguing with each other. Basically, I think the dad's died. Um, you can tell this is the point where um, his older brother is getting stressed, like to the uh, yeah. And Bob Overdeck's like an uncle that just is always having a go at him, and the yeah. point where they're throwing forks at each other. And I mean, well, a bit of a spoiler alert, but um, his mum, Jamie Lee Curtis, basically ends up driving the car through the through the wall at the end of the episode. Wow, well. <laughs> it's. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it because the acting in it is, like, a really good. Like, it's all... 
it, it is, it's a difficult episode to watch. I mean, it, it's set at Christmas. Stress-wise. Yeah, oh, it's it's like nine out of ten. Like, if you've ever seen Boiling Point, that's stressful. This this is probably the most stressful episode of the really? series, but it's just done so well, like really, really well. Like, they're it's just constant arguing, shouting, and screaming at each other. Well, I do plan on watching the bear after really enjoying Boiling Point and everyone recommending it. So yeah, you know, the bear was because sure. it's the second series, but the first series was a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, because there's a bit in it with um, <coughs> what's his name as well. Um, what's the English actor's name? Oh, actually, there's an English actor that's also in it, but I forgot what his name is. But I was I was wondering. I thought it would be good if they did some sort of like a crossover <laughs> with Boiling Point and there. And there, yeah. Um, yeah, because neither copied each other because Boiling Point was a movie to begin with. Yeah, it was all done in one yeah. one, one take. One, yeah. But um, if no one's watched Boiling Point, by the way, also like, and you've seen Bear, watch it, and if you've seen Boiling Point and not watch Bear watch that yeah because they're both apparently from what I've heard well you've seen both haven't you yeah I've watched both yeah. and they're both phenomenal TV yeah. shows like the yeah I mean the Boiling Point I think I think it had six episodes four four, epi- four. Oh, four episodes four episodes and uh, yeah I watched yeah I think I watched it within a day or two days but yeah. again stressful but I mean the film itself's really good yeah like say it's all done in one one take kind of thing 100% um, but yeah yeah Right, the bear for your number two. Yeah. So before we continue, should we have another festive drink? Uh, yeah, we can do. Um, I found out I've never had this before, but I actually like Bailey's. Do you like Bailey's? I do like Bailey's. Can I, have I a actually bit of Bailey's. I'll have a little bit of Bailey's. Um, are you all right just to pour it? Because I'm just sorting out my microphone. Oh, of course. Um, I actually have some. If you want to have after, um, it's a basically a Cornish Bailey's, but it's a fudge one. Oh yes, I um, bought a white chocolate one earlier today. Oh, did you? I don't know how much of this left. I've drunk a lot of it. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's the same as Bailey's. It's um, Lauren's mum and dad, when they go down to Cornwall, always get it. Um, what's it called? Cornish Cornish Lust, I think it's called. Okay. But you can get different flavours, so you can get... Thank you very much. Um, so you can get strawberry... It's like a strawberry and cream one, which I used to like, but I've gone off because it's a bit too um, sweet. And then you can... Yeah, there's like a fudge one that I've got, so... Nice. Um, we'll try well, I'd always more. assumed it was coffee. What, Baileys? Yeah. I think it's because a lot of people have it with coffee, don't yeah. they? Like an Irish... Do they call it an Irish coffee? Yeah. Um, well, no, no, because no, we were discussing that. Isn't that whiskey in the coffee? An Irish coffee. Uh, you can have Bailey's in a coffee, though. Yeah, I think you can. I think it's more popular than, like, hot chocolates, isn't it? Well, Lauren's dad got some Bailey's for Christmas because they went out for Lauren's from birth to a Italian place, and he had a... Well, it might not have been called an Irish coffee, but he had basic coffee with Bailey's, and he really liked it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But well, yeah, so, it was just... It was um, brought for me by my mother-in-law, and I was like trying to be like yeah hey, thank you very much but like obviously I I thought I didn't like it and I was mm. like it doesn't mention anywhere about coffee in it mm. I found out obviously it wasn't a coffee liqueur which I thought it was and tried it and now there's very little left in the bottle <laughs> I've had one over the, well more than one a night oh have you yeah well uh, we'll try some of my mm. fudge one after so um, we're down to your number two right so I'm not mistaken number one no oh, sorry number one yeah because Royal Family Queen of Sheba was my yeah. number two. Oh, of course yeah my number one is good because you definitely won't have this on your list because um, yeah. I'm pretty sure you've never watched the TV show. Um, so I'm just trying to get comfortable. Uh, it's a show called Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, do you know what I was about to say? <laughs> and when I was looking down the list, because um, I, I just sort of Googled just to give me a few ideas, and that was one of the ones that came up was... Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to... So I'm just on the list now. Sorry, you carry on. I'm, I'm just curious to see if it's the one on, that they They've recommend. only done one Christmas special, I believe. I'm I was think. There. Um, it's just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal um, I feel like almost I have to find the clip very quickly to put on the TV for you to see because if anything's going to think I might watch this show it'll be this clip um, always sunny in Philadelphia I didn't realise as well that Rob McElhenney was married to um, Kate Olsen yeah who was also in it yeah yeah, Steve, I never, yeah. well I watched a film they with- kept their relationship quiet to begin with because he was effectively her boss but I'm, I've been watching, um, what you call it, uh, what's it, Welcome to Wrexham, and I've seen her at one game, but then she kept, it was like the rest of the cast, with it, apart from Danny DeVito, yeah. the rest of the cast came. So I just thought she was a member of the cast. He didn't really like mention it, or you don't really see them together. Like You see Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively in it, but you don't really see them yeah. two, and he doesn't really seem to mention it. So, yeah, I was quite surprised by that. All right. I found the clip. So basically, um, to set this up, because uh, 
you guys won't be able to um, listen or get the audio. I'll put a little link on Facebook, on um, our socials so you can watch it. Or just search Frank in the Couch, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, but the setup of the Christmas special is one part of it. There's always two stories going on simultaneously mm-hmm. in, all the, in every episode. Like two schemes happening. Um, but the one with uh, Dennis and Dee, who are twins, and Frank is their dad, quotation marks. Okay. Um, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, <clears throat> they basically, he always, when they was growing up, would always find out what they wanted for Christmas and then buy it for himself. <laughs> so this year, he bought himself a brand new, like, Louis Vuitton type style um, uh, handbag mm. and a brand new Ferrari. Um, just okay. to basically rub it in their faces saying that this is mine but those were their dream gifts yeah yeah um, so they try and go on a, they basically with uh, Frank's old business partner who he, Frank thought was dead yeah they try and do a sort of like Scrooge um, past present future Christmas uh, okay so in this one they're doing the present yeah in which they're trying to find out or basically tell Frank that these are your employees this is what they think of you okay so I'll show you what happens Nice turn up the sound. Sorry, I had to. I just had some background YouTube music on while uh, we were doing it. There we up. Yep. All right, tonight's the annual Christmas party. We want to show you how much your ex employees despise you. But I haven't worked here in years. I mean, why is this a Christmas present to me? It's not a Christmas present, Frank. It's This is the Christmas present. Uh, all right, Frank, here's the plan. We're going to hide you somewhere in the office so you can hear people talking shit about you, all right? Frank, by the way, is played oh, by Danny cool. DeVito. Oh, I see where you're going with this now. Sew me into the couch. Sew you into the couch? What are you saying? Yeah, that's what I do at home all the time. Hide in the couch. It's a great hiding place. I catch Charlie pounding off all the time. Pounding off? Where do you get these terms? Why right? do you want to catch Charlie masturbating? No, I don't care. No, let's just hide you in a closet or under a desk or something. Look, you want to do some Christmas carol bullshit, you do it my way. Okay, fine. We'll sew you into a couch. Okay, right. Okay, right. You just rip off the back, take out the stuffing, put me inside, and sew it up. It's the most wonderful time of your day. Folks, hey, to be honest, huh? Here we go. How we doing over here? Uh, not well. This is ridiculous. People are definitely starting to notice. Of course they're starting to notice. There's a grown man crammed inside of a couch, for Christ's sakes. They're going to notice. This is shocking. Grab that guy. Hey, you two. Hey, hey you two. So how are we doing at the Christmas party? We having a good time? Yeah, great, great, great. great. So, uh, Frank Reynolds. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were just talking about him. He's the worst, right. huh? Do you, do you work here? Yeah, of course, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. we pop around. We're we pop uh, around here. consultationists. For this. So we consult here. We consult the whole, across the street, too. Across the whole street. <laughs> you know that couch? <laughs> what are you saying? A man in a couch? Hello. <laughs> That's absurd. No, I believe there's a man in that couch right there. There is no man. There's no man. Say some things about Frank Reynolds. Say them loud and make sure that they're horrible, horrible things. And then we'll deal with the man in the couch. Okay, so there is a man in the couch. All right, just call Frank Reynolds an asshole. Who is Frank Reynolds? He's the man in the couch. Oh, my God. What are you people doing? Well, you just say something about Frank that's horrible. Call him an asshole. Frank Reynolds is an asshole. Oh, thank you. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I did not expect it <coughs> to involve seeing uh, Danny DeVito's ass. No, completely butt naked, <laughs> thrown into the sofa. Um, it's just a great moment. Okay. It's like one of the top always sunny moments. Yeah. And um, also in the episode, you've got Charlie and Mac who are going along trying to sort of remember their Christmases of youth and realise, like, Mac basically, he used to go from... Uh, the annual tradition was they'd go from house to house and open up a random present under someone else's tree and then go on to the next house. And he has a realisation in the future that they were basically stealing other people's presents. Okay. <laughs> he had no idea. He thought it was just... <laughs> that was their tradition. And Charlie um, 
the tradition that he had was his mum would always invite Santas to the house um, all throughout the evening yeah. and those Santas would give him a present they'd have loads of Santas and there's his realisation that his mum was a prostitute uh, okay. <laughs> he was sleeping <laughs> with all these men um, and it culminates with him basically in the mall seeing Santa red light suddenly going in his brain and he walks up to him and like did you fuck my mum Santa Claus did you fuck my mum and then just absolutely beating him up <laughs> it's just so funny um, it's really worth watching. It's a brilliant Christmas. I'm gonna. Special. I think I'm. Um, I'm just watching a couple of other <clears> things at the minute, which I'm gonna finish, and then uh, I think I'm gonna start it from the beginning. The issue. So, anyone wish wanting to watch Joyce on the in Philadelphia? It's like one of the longest running live action comedies of all time now. Yeah, okay. Um, but people don't like it because it's a lot of people shouting. Yeah. The whole idea of it is you're not meant to like the characters. I say this so many times. Yeah. You are not meant to like a single one of their, ca- their them characters they have no redeeming qualities whatsoever mm. the whole purpose is these are the worst people in the world and you're just watching them attempt to do stuff mm. um, first series is a bit difficult it got cancelled almost on the first series yeah um, they basically told them there to bring in a big guest or mm. a big actor for the second series and that's when they got Danny DeVito in it mm. he was only meant to be a temporary person but ended up staying and is now I think we're on season 17 now oh okay. like it's been going on for a long time yeah, yeah. <clears throat> are they only like sort of like 20 minute episodes though? yeah that yeah, one's yeah. a 45 minute one the yeah, Christmas yeah. special but okay. it's the only one like it okay. and they did one recently in which they went to Ireland and that's like a four parter yeah but yeah. it's great how they get to Ireland they basically they decide they want to go on holiday for a bit mm. um, and uh, one of the uh, the she quits working at the bar yeah. and they're basically saying that a monkey could do your job mm. so Frank takes him literally and hires a monkey oh, to really? work in the bar and they're slowly getting drunk <laughs> just put in like they're trying to work out where to go and this monkey's just sliding them pints down the bar you go, they're going cheers monkey and you're just getting <laughs> drunk with, it's so ridiculous but it works so well yeah, okay. um, yeah but the Christmas special is honestly one of my favourite yeah. Christmas specials of all the time yeah. it's just mayhem but done so well yeah, yeah very good um, so that'll give me down to my number one I'm guessing Only Fools it is Only Fools and it is Heroes and Villains the only thing I remember from that is Batman and Robin obviously yeah so yeah, yeah that one, the most iconic scene really yeah I think I think that is a, sort of up there with um, Del Boy telling Trigger to play it cool and then leaning on the bar and yeah. falling through um, but yeah that I mean have you, have you have you seen that episode I couldn't tell you what happened apart from uh, that scene um, I mean, I'm, again, I'm sure a lot of people have seen this one, but yeah, basically Rodney and I think Cassandra's away, so Rodney's partner's away and um, Dell's partner's away, so they're kind of like, yeah, back home alone kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a party at one of the what, is it one of the local landlords is having a party, so it's a fancy dress one. So Dell's like, oh, we could. It was a cash prize, so they go all out, drive into the party van, get stuck, uh, van breaks stuck, van breaks down. Um, but sort of early out it's weird because actually I'm trying to think me and Lauren watching it the day and it's like it's like they're, they're sort of in a shopping precinct but it's like completely dead because it's at night and it and I'm sure this is oh it's like half past ten or something I'm like that's a bit of a weird time to be going to a party like get into yeah. a party at half past ten so they're like old, it's because we're old Charlie yeah it's probably, <laughs> yeah, it's probably because we're old um, but yeah so they end up having to run to the party and then there's a counsellor that's about to get mugged and just sees them to but it, after they talk he, he obviously turns around and he's like is this all Councillor Murray I want to talk to you about his home improvement grant or something and then Ron is in the background like typical Batman like come on Dale like punching his punching his <laughs> fist and stuff um, yeah get to the party they meet Trigger and uh, Boise oh no no they meet Boise who uh, yeah basically doesn't tell them that the, this guy's party has died and it's actually his wake oh. and then they turn in and yeah they've got the silly string and stuff and spray it everywhere and, yeah <laughs> but yeah it's yeah a classic com- comedy of errors sort of thing yeah yeah it's yeah it is a good episode it is a really funny episode oh, you yeah. made me re- think that maybe I should go back and watch Only Falls I feel like I used to watch when I was growing up and I'm really into comedy but I used to watch as well like the sun used to give out like free DVDs back in the days uh, and it'd yeah. be like a load of like comedy clips and stuff like that yeah yeah I used to just watch them because like back in our like days we didn't have the streaming services no no so like a lot of old dated um, TV shows weren't on TV anymore so no, that'd no. be the way of watching them yeah yeah like you wouldn't be able to catch like YouTube clip necessarily yeah so yeah random YouTube clips so that's mm. what I had so I have a lot of memories did I watch that show or did I just watch a clip of that episode yeah 
So yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend going. I mean, they used to be on Netflix, but then Netflix have took them off now. Oh, so really? they'll all be on BBC, I'm sure. No, they're not on BBC either. Not BBC? No, they're. Um, I watch them on Brit UK Box. UK TV one. Gold. Oh, okay. or, but so I've got them recorded. But I mean, some of them are like three. I've been on my Virgin Box for about three years. I've just, oh, really? Yeah, but they're obviously with adverts, I have to fast forward them. But uh, but yeah, so we'll have to start doing that recording. Yeah. Watching. So yeah, uh, these are our top five Christmas specials. And uh, now on to our top Christmas movies. Yes. Do you want to start so, us off with number five then? <laughs> uh, this is my original list, and I don't know whether I should change it. Okay. I watched, over the Christmas period, um, over 25 Christmas films. Uh, should I list them quickly? Um, I watched, starting off with Nativity 2, Danger in the Manger, The Grinch, and the latest one, Polar Express, After Christmas, The Bad Guy is a Very ho- Bad cri- Holiday, um, Nativity, The Boss Baby, Christmas Bonus, Die Hard, How the Grinch Stole Christmas 2000, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original animated, Muppet Christmas Carol, Black Friday, Anna and the Apocalypse, Christmas in Connecticut, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, a Muppet's Christmas, Letters to Santa, White Christmas, Cobra, Santa Claus, uh, Sister Swap, A Hometown Holiday, Fat Man, Santa with Muscles, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, Jingle All the Way 2, Jack Frost, Miracle on 34th Street, A Christmas Story, and A Christmas for the Cranks. Oh, wow. I hadn't seen most of those before, and including A Confession. Mm. I've never watched Die Hard. Oh, okay. I don't know how that had never happened, but I just never got around to it. Every Christmas I'd be like, oh, I should watch it, and it just never happened. No. So I watched Die Hard for the first time on 5th of de- December 2023. Oh, okay. Really enjoyed it. Really, yeah. really enjoyed it. It's a great film. Christmas film? <clears throat> um, no. In no. my opinion. <laughs> I, I, I do get what you're saying. I think it's just more of a thing now. People like say it just to be like, oh, I want to say dark. Let, let's just have a... Not an argument, but you know what I mean? I think it's just more of a people just say it for the sake of it now like all oh, I want to say it's like mm. a Christmas film when yeah I don't I don't agree with it. well, I watched um, one called Cobra which I've reviewed on the podcast for those who haven't listened to it um, and that's I got told that was a Christmas film it literally has a beginning scene in which people are, are shopping and there's Christmas decorations and it's set during the Christmas period but no mention of Christmas whatsoever well to be honest me picking some of the from our last top five TV shows a lot of the Only Fools and Horses episodes uh, Christmas specials don't actually <coughs> like feature Christmas in them. Like I think two of the two that I yeah. picked, I don't think really kind of acknowledge that it's Christmas really at all. But they're just they're there. Yeah. So no, I get that. But, so um, uh, because of that, I think some are going to have to change because I can't keep this list as it is. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put as my number five now, Nativity. Originally my number two. Mm. Um, have you ever watched it? I've seen like a trailer for it, and it just <laughs> it's, didn't, a, it's a didn't, British film, yeah. like very British um, in the style of sort of. The, do you remember there was a stage back in like early two thousand, like confetti and stuff like that, mm. of like very British produced films. Um, it stars uh, Martin Freeman as a teacher, um, quite a serious teacher who doesn't like Christmas because his girlfriend left him, left him at Christmas, and he yeah. was about to propose to her. She went off to Hollywood. Um, so and he ended up becoming a um, he was an actor yeah. but he ended up becoming a primary school teacher um, as did their friend Mr Shakespeare mm-hmm. uh, Mr Shakespeare was in a big sort of like sort of like posh primary school but uh, Martin Freeman's character is in a low key sort of like yeah quite rough sort of primary school and it ends up um, the nativity this guy Mr Poppy who's He's definitely got some sort of issues, but he acts like a child yeah. in, the sh- in the film. And um, he uh, gets it into his head that Hollywood is coming to see the nativity play that they're putting on. Yeah. Because I think um, Martin Freeman's character gloats to the other teacher saying that that he's going to have the better show. And it just basically escalates a series of like confusion and errors and stuff mm. but the show that they put on ends up being in Coventry Cathedral and it's a magnificent show and Hollywood does come along and great musical numbers it's really really fun and it's all like improv and the kids sort of like acting they've yeah. got a rough script but the kids they don't know what the kids are going to say Yeah, yeah. and yeah it's just a lot of fun it's just a charming Christmas story and actually 
yeah really sweet and yeah. really nice ending yeah, okay pulls at your heartstrings which Christmas movies are meant to yeah yeah, okay. Well, that leads me on to my uh, my number five. Or does it, Charlie? That's it. We're going to stop there. I've decided. I just picked a random moment. Genuinely, I just picked a random moment in the audio. And I, it was Charlie saying, well, that brings me nicely to my number five. So I figured it might not. Right, we'll see you next week. And we do promise to finish off our top five movies then. See you later, guys. Bye.